Welcome. My name is Josh Almeida, and I am very excited to bring to you our latest installment of Focus on Learning, brought to you by New Bedford Public Schools and New Bedford Cable Network. While the best way to find out what your child could be doing at home is to work directly with your child's teacher in school, we know these videos will help everyone keep learning active at home. My name is uh, Mrs. B. I teach kindergarten over at Rodman Elementary School here in New Bedford. I'm going to spend a little time with you today uh, to review parts of speech and we're going to particularly look at adjectives and um, what they can do for our writing by adding some details and also how it uh, enhances our speech and the way that we speak, getting those extra details in there. So when you look over here, I color-coded parts of speech, okay? So we have our nouns in blue. We do have a special noun that we've learned about, the pronoun I. So nouns are people, places, and things. And I is a person, so when we use it, but it's a little bit different than our regular um, nouns. Anytime we write the pronoun I, it is going to be capital I. I put it in dark blue. The rest of our nouns are in light blue. And I listed some examples for us. So some examples of people, student, teacher, doctor. Some examples of places, home, school, park. Examples of things, bus, dog, table. So these are all nouns. The reason I put them in blue is because I sort of, blue is a nice sturdy color. I sort of view that as the foundation of our sentence. It's gonna tell us who's doing something in the sentence, who the sentence is about. Um, so they are going to be highlighted in blue in the sentences that we look at coming up. Now the verbs I put together in green because verbs are action words, they're things we do. And to me, green means go. So there's gonna have our action words. And here are some examples. Run, sing, eat, dance, play, cook, jump, see. Those are all verbs, they're things we can do. So when we look at the rest of our sentences, our verbs are going to be underlined in green. When we go ahead and look over at our adjectives, remembering that this is a little bit of our focus today, um, I put them in purple. To me, purple is a nice, bold, colorful color, and that's what adjectives do. They add color to our statements and to our sentences when we write them. So they are describing nouns. Okay, they modify nouns. They tell us more information about our nouns. Here are some examples. Red, purple, big, little, sour, loud, heavy, soft. A good way to think of for adjectives is they are any of our color words. They describe the way things look. So if you think of the five senses, it's how they look color-wise, if they're big, if they're small. If you think of your sense of sound, so things that are loud, if they are quiet, your sense of smell, things could be stinky or maybe they smell sweet and nice. Um, how they feel when you think of texture. So that could be um, soft or fuzzy, anything like that. Um, and then how things taste. So I had sour on here, sweet is one um, as well. So those are all adjectives. They help uh, describe nouns. So I have a little activity before we look at our sentences. Um, these are the examples I gave us, but we're gonna do a few together. So I have three words, and let's look at this one. Dig. So now we're going to think, is dig a person, place, or thing? No. Is dig something we can do? Yes, we can. We can dig in the dirt or in the sand. Let's just make sure we don't think it's an adjective before we commit to that. Is dig describing something? No, it is not. So it is a verb. It is an action. It's something we can do. Let's take a look at the word toy. Okay. Um, we'll start this way. Is toy describing something? Mm, no, let's see. Is toy something we can do? No. Is toy a person, place, or thing? Yes, toy is a thing. It's something we can play with. And then our last word we have is fluffy. Is fluffy a person, place, or thing? No. 
Is fluffy something we can do? No. Does fluffy describe something? It does. Fluffy is going to tell us how something might feel. So we're going to add it to our adjectives, okay? So now that you have helped me place those and we have a good grasp on what we know about nouns, verbs, and adjectives, we're going to put them into context, okay? So here are some sentences. I've written them each twice. So the first time I wrote them, I just underlined the parts of speech so we could see it, and then I actually rewrote the sentence with those words in the correct colors. So that way we can see how we use nouns, verbs, and adjectives, and we can put them together to make complete sentences. So the brown dog barked, okay? Brown, I have underlined and rewritten in purple because brown tells us what the dog looks like. And dog is our noun, it is a thing. Barked is now in green because it's what the dog did. The brown dog barked. Okay, we move on to the next sentence. The red ball bounced. So here we have red is underlined in purple. It is an adjective. Red is one of our color words. It is describing what the ball looks like. It's not a green ball, it's a red ball. Ball is underlined and rewritten in blue because it's a noun, it is a thing. And then we have bounced in green. It is underlined and rewritten because that is what the ball did. It is our verb, it is our action what the ball is doing. So the whole sentence all together is the red ball bounced. So I know what the object is we're talking about. I know a little bit of what it looks like and I know what it's doing. So this is a complete sentence. If we look at this one, I ran to the big bus. So this sentence is a little bit different because it starts with the pronoun I. So I've underlined it and rewritten it in our dark blue. So we can set that aside. We know it's a noun, so it is blue, but it's dark blue because that's our special pronoun we talked about earlier. I, and what did we do? We ran. So that is now in green. That is our action word. To the big. Now we have an adjective. It is in purple. It is describing the bus. The bus which is in blue because that is our noun. So when we look at the whole thing, I ran to the big bus. We have our complete thought, we have our action, we know who is involved, and we know a little bit of information about the bus, okay, what one of the objects are. When we look at our sentences, I'm going to point out that all my sentences started with a capital letter, okay, and they all ended in a period because that was the end of my statement, so I used a period. I also left nice spaces in between all my words, so you knew that where one ended and the next one began. Okay, we're gonna do a little activity together, um, and we're gonna start with this sentence. I see a bear. So I went ahead and I underlined I in dark blue, because that is our pronoun. Okay. We have another noun in there. We have bear. That's a thing. And I have see underlined in green because that is our verb. So you'll notice that nothing is underlined in purple because we don't have an adjective in that sentence. Right now it just says I see a bear, but we have no information about this bear because this is the activity. Okay. So if you would like to, you can go ahead and close your eyes. If you don't want to, that's okay. Just imagine this bear in your brain, okay? We're gonna use our imaginations. We're gonna think in our heads. So I see a bear, and we're all gonna think, what does this bear look like? Picture this bear in your mind, okay? I bet we're all thinking of very different bears. Some of them might be big, some of them might be small. They could be brown, black, purple, we don't really know. They might be in different locations. They might be different textures, okay? Maybe some have coarse fur, some are really fluffy. We don't know, we have very different bears in our minds right now. So what we need is some more information. So I'm gonna rewrite this sentence and I'm gonna add an adjective for us. Okay, so let's rewrite this. 
I C A tiny bear. I'm going to make sure I left my spaces, add my period at the end. Okay. I can go in. I still have the pronoun I in the front. I have my noun bear at the end. I still have the same verb, which I'm going to underline in green, C. The only difference now is that I've added the adjective tiny. It's given us some information about this bear. So now if we were to go back and do the same activity, and we close our eyes again, and we try to picture this bear that we had in our minds before, we now know it's tiny. So if you had a big bear in your mind, it should be shrinking down a little bit, so it's tiny. So we could still all be thinking of very different bears, different colors, different textures, but we all have the same size bear now in our minds. So this adjective, adding that detail, helped us see a little bit more of the same picture. What happens if I add more? Well, let's see. So now when I go in, I'm going to add I, C, A. I'm going to give you a bonus and put two extras in. I'm going to keep tiny there, black, and white, bare. I'm leaving my nice spaces, okay? I am making sure that I have my capital letter and my period at the end of my sentence because my statement is over. I'm going to go in, identify my verb was still the same, it's C. My nouns are the same, my pronoun I, and my noun at the end, bear, okay? But now I have extra adjectives. I still have tiny, but now I also have black and white, okay? So let's see what happens now when we go back to our activity and we close our eyes and we think that now we have a tiny black and white bear. So now we're all thinking of the same size bear. We're all thinking of the same color bears, okay? So now with this added information, again, we're seeing more and more of the same bear in our minds, okay? I won't write them, but I will describe more to you. What if now I told you that we, I see a tiny black and white soft bear. So now I've given you another adjective. So now you know the texture of the bear as well. I could go on and say I see a tiny black and white soft blue-eyed bear. Now close your eyes and picture that for a minute. And when you open them, I'm going to ask you if this looks somewhat like the bear that you saw in your mind. So we started with very different bears, and now as we went on and added more and more adjectives, more details to our writing and our spoken words, we ended up seeing, hopefully, uh, the same bear. We have our black and white, tiny, soft, blue-eyed panda bear, okay? So this is an activity that you can do at home, okay? What you can do is just exactly what we did. You can pick an object, whether you want to go get it from somewhere in your home or you just want to think of it in your mind and you can describe it slowly to your family. So you're going to add adjectives little by little, okay, and see if they can guess what the object is. For example, maybe your first sentence is, I see a toy. They probably won't be able to figure out what toy it is, so you're going to add more. I see a blue toy and that'll narrow it down for them. And maybe there are a few blue toys in the room. So then you can say, I see a noisy blue toy and see how many adjectives you have to add before they can guess um, what the object is you're thinking of. And you can take turns doing it. And it just really helps you to understand how powerful adjectives are and how they're so needed in not only our writing, but our speaking to add details um, and enhance what we are writing and talking about, okay? Uh, well, I hope you had fun. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to see you soon.